world of urban development today on The Express. Cheers, you guys. On today's special, best outside the box. This is a, a family-friendly facility that's been designed to serve uh, the city of Vancouver today and 50 years into the future. We're very excited as well about this next phase of development. Leaders in green living. Creating a, a model sustainable community is really about creating a remarkable livable community. Best in show. I've been through that building and I've seen it from the water and I've been all around it and it is so unique. There's a whole bunch of people that fall within the category of rental that can't afford to own. Affordable housing. I think it's a huge untapped market. That we're building communities for our children and our grandchildren. See that and more from the UDI Awards for Excellence in Development. This whole industry is far in advance of any other development community that I've experienced. Welcome to The Express, I'm Johanna Ward. This is the Urban Development Institute Awards, celebrating achievements in important community projects like heritage and affordable housing builds. Throughout the next half hour, we'll be taking you on tours of local developments and profiling movers and shakers in the industry. But first, it's a quick history of UDI. The Vancouver real estate scene is constantly changing and recent development is becoming more sophisticated with green technology leading the way. Vancouver's Urban Development Institute represents the development industry. It promotes good land use planning and development practices. The mission of the institute is to you know, raise the bar in community building and uh, to educate our members about new building practices, about uh, new legislation, um, you know, environmental technologies. It represents the companies and the people in the private sector that build the homes that we live in, that build the shops that we shop in. The UDI, which was started in 1972, has evolved with the times, and that can be seen in the UDI Awards, which are given out to recognize excellence in urban development. I think a, a reflection of the environment that we're in, and, and it's really about recognizing the excellence uh, in the industry and the, and the projects that really demonstrate that. The change in the UDI and its role in, in the development industry has also been uh, very progressive. UDI now plays a very important role in education, in training, as well as in advocacy. You know, the industry and the, and the built form in, in, in Vancouver has changed so significantly. You know, when the awards first started and when the UDI first started, there was very little in the form of condo development. All that changed in the post-Expo 86 era, and condo development took off. And so that became a big part of what UDI was, was looking at. The, the scope of our um, membership and our organization has uh, evolved over time to take on a, a much more broader perspective. Another sign of the times, sustainability. It used to be one category of the awards, and now it's a judging criteria for all categories. You know, it's, it's, it's an, uh, I think, a, a reflection of the environment that we're in, and, and it's really about recognizing the excellence uh, in the industry and the, and the projects that really demonstrate that. There were 20 award winners at this year's UDI Awards and a record number of project submissions. I'm Bianca Selterbeck in Vancouver for The Express. This year for the UDI Awards, there were 143 eligible submissions, competing for top spot in 18 different categories, plus the coveted best in show. The prize? Well, an award for excellence in development, and also good old-fashioned bragging rights. This is your award. Congratulations. Remember that we're building communities for our children and our grandchildren. The clients and developers that I work with in other jurisdictions, they all come to Vancouver, you know, in order to learn how to do proper developments. So whether it's the design and architecture, working with the city officials, the marketing, the sustainable aspects of the developments, everyone comes here because this community and this whole industry is far in advance of any other uh, development community that I've experienced. If you're on a team and you're doing a really cool development or a big master plan, you want it to be the best, and especially when it's judged within your peers. The winner of Best in Show 
Erickson. Erickson. It's a big team effort and it was really a, a lot of energy, a, a leap of faith in this project and, uh, and a really successful project for us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Peter. Congratulations, best in show, how do you feel? That's wonderful. Uh, you know, it's been a, a long time coming. That was a long uh, project to work on. Uh, it's about five years in the making and quite a complicated design and leap of faith on Concord's part to take such an adventurous route. I think the best in show really for me was, uh, well, two things. The best in show because I, I've been through that building and I've seen it from the water and I've been all around it and it is so unique. And it's really one of the unique, if, if not the most unique building in the entire city now because it twists on its axis and how the glass has all these different shapes. So really it was a worthy winner of Best in Show. So obviously we want a clever design, one that really is good for the people that are using it, whether it's residential or whether it's commercial. We want it to interact well with the community, the context around the project, sustainability of course, in energy use and so on. And is it successful in the market? How well have people responded to it? There's so many different layers to this than oh, just is. like looking at like the four walls, right? No, of course there is because now people work, they go from early to late and there's, there's such a lack of separation between your personal life and business life. So how do you accommodate that? And the projects that we saw were just brilliant. I want a treadmill at my desk. You got it. Treadmill at my desk. <laughs> you got it. It's a tough business, but we've got some tremendous, tremendous people. I mean, very bright, very innovative. I mean, really wanting to do the right thing. And again, I'm, I sit on the board of the Urban Development Institute and, and other boards that are similar to this. And this particular industry and this particular city is the best group of people that I've ever worked with in my entire career over many industries. There's another side to this awards gala, a party in the penthouse. And we'll be sure to visit that before the end of today's show. But speaking of penthouse living, according to the latest International Housing Affordability Survey, Vancouver is the most expensive city in all of Canada to live in. Our next story investigates the challenges that young buyers face. It seems like every day new luxury condos like these are popping up in Vancouver. But the reality is most of these homes aren't in the cards for the buyers they're intended for. Vancouver is one of the most unaffordable cities in the Western Hemisphere. There's no other city in North America where you require such a large proportion of your income to pay off a mortgage. And so most young homeowners have to move outside of Vancouver in order to buy their first home. So they move to outlying districts, suburbs. One such example is Carrie and Brad Mahar. This young couple recently bought their first home in North Vancouver after moving here from Ontario. Being fresh out of school and new to the job force made their search for an affordable home not without some challenges. Isn't this so exciting, decorating our first tree in our new home? We kept comparing to back home in Ontario and price comparing, <laughs> which <laughs> was ridiculous because 600 square feet here was 3,000 square feet back home in the same prices. And it was a one bedroom versus five bedroom. It was kind of just like, why, why are we here? <laughs> what is going on? It was really important for us to get a place that we could move into, um, see, the, you know, have potential to grow our family and enjoy the place and have enough room that we're not feeling like we're on top of each other. That was one of the challenges we faced was trying to find a place that was big enough um, that had everything we wanted for a good price that we could actually afford. The Mahars opted for space over a location in the city and are happily setting up for their first Christmas in their new home. But having to move to the suburbs or being forced to rent may not be the only options for young people wanting to live in Vancouver. Right in the heart of downtown, a new development is soon to go up. Designed by the architects at Henriquez Partners, 60 West Cordova is making home buying a reality for those who never thought it was possible. And there's a whole bunch of people that fall within the category of rental that can't afford to own. And so the idea for 60 West Cordova was to try and find mechanisms through which we could create affordable ownership for people who traditionally rent in Vancouver, which is over half of the population. With prices starting at $219,000, people earning as little as $30,000 a year can afford to buy a unit. This type of accessibility was achieved by keeping construction costs low, investing buyers out, and taking out such amenities as underground parking. One of the most important costs that people assume has to go into the uh, price of a building is parking. Parking costs about $50,000 a stall. 
So if we can eliminate the parking, we automatically reduce each unit by $50,000. That's a good start. A start that Henriquez hopes will continue in the future. His firm is already working on future affordable housing projects in Vancouver, which is good news for young buyers in the same category as the Mahars. The big lesson is I think the market is so deep for people who can't afford to buy home that I think it's a huge untapped market. I'm Mana Mansour in Vancouver for The Express. Barriers to affordability along with sustainable densification are hot topics in Vancouver. You can learn more online at withinyourmeans.com. Now you are watching our Express special on the 2010 UDI Awards for Excellence in Development. And here's a look at some of this year's winners. Vancouver's development industry is uh, one of the most dynamic and strongest industries um, in the world and uh, proud to be a part of it. The Park Lane staff, this is a testament to your professionalism and high standards. This is your award. Congratulations. And I must say this is a real honor to receive this award. And uh, on behalf of my uh, business partners who are here tonight, uh, Gerald Heinrichs and John Friesen and myself, uh, thank you to UDI for thinking of the Okanagan. Still to come. University's Green Dream. Creating a model sustainable community is really about creating a remarkable livable community that is also sustainable. And the winner is Alto, developed by Anthem Properties, John Bingham, Bingham Hill Architects. The Alto and the Environment. You're watching local TV on the Express.